sci-fi is a Universal Studios network. And now an exclusive sci-fi production in search of the prisoner. Move over, Rover. Sci-fi is taking over. are you on? That would be telling. We want information. Information. Information! I am the new number six. I am trapped in the most influential cult television series of all time. I am the prisoner. It's just a, a unique television, absolutely unique television experience. It's kind of akin to me to psychedelic music, you know, it's just a very psychedelic kind of trippy thing. It was like what every kid wants to get up and do. He was making a legend, a fable, a myth, an allegory. The Prisoner first aired in 1967 and was the product of one man's eccentric vision. That man was Patrick McGowan. After enjoying huge success in the international smash Danger Man and being offered the role of 007, Patrick was hot property. He approached the then controller of ATV, Lou Grade, with the incredible, almost ridiculous idea of making a program centered on what would happen should Secret Service agents retire or fall foul of the powers that be. I suppose you're wondering what you're doing here. It had crossed my mind. There was to be no discernible plot line and no clear beginning or end to the story. Each week would focus on the hero's attempts to escape from the repressive regime of the village. You not just realised there's no way out. Number six's refusal to accept his fate and the exploration of issues of personal freedom and mind control were the prisoner's driving force. I am not a number. I am a free man. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed or numbered. My life is my own. In essence, the prisoner was the first and arguably the last concept television show. Oh, that's excellent. How did you get interested in The Prisoner? Well, it goes back to a TV series in the early 60s called Danger Man. This starred Patrick McGowan. So the script editor on it, a chap called George Mark Stein, who had worked for MI5 and the intelligence agencies, he knew of a place in Scotland called Invalair Lodge where they used to send spies who knew too much. How did you set up your Prisoner 6 to 1 society? I used to watch it and find that there was a TV announcer that before each episode said, and this week we've got people writing in saying what their theory is. I said, well, I really want to talk to these people. They said, well, you better write to us then. So I wrote to them, but they came back and said, would you like your name and address broadcast at the end of the last episode? I said, oh, I was thrilled, but I didn't know what was going to happen. Within two weeks, I had 600 letters come through and I was beginning to wonder what on earth to do. Weren't you scared by the people who turned up? <laughs> Baby, what a crazy scene! <laughs> no, I wasn't, because, do you know, they all seemed to be quite normal people. Collarbone's connected to the neck bone, and the neck bone's connected to the head bone. Now, hear that word Number of the Lord. There were, presumably, some quite scary prisoner aficionados. <laughs> Many artists have been inspired to produce work influenced by the prisoner and the village of Port Marion. We are young, we run green, keep our tea, nice and clean, see our friends. The 
combination of the powerful visual imagery of the village and the associations with the incredible show have offered artists a ready-made frame of reference for their music and pop promos. My grandfather really was inspired by the idea that one could develop and build one's own private village on some unspoilt shore without defiling the natural landscape. Um, he wanted to practice what he preached as a conservationist and a campaigner for the sustainable use of the countryside. I think that Clough's vision for the village um, and McGowan's vision for his series very much sort of combined to create the prisoner. McGowan needed the village really to place his, his dream or vision for the series and Clough was delighted when he saw the results in that it showed off the village to its best advantage from the air, from all, all angles, in sort of full colour. One of its strokes of genius, of course, is that it, it alluringly refuses to, to, to tell you quite what it's about, whose side anyone is on, you don't know. It was shot, of course, and made during, during the Cold War, and so uh, the suggestion is that there are sides, but he never knows, and we never know. We just don't quite know. I'm not sure which side runs this village. A mutual problem. No one understood exactly what was going on. I mean, you had Patrick McGowan wandering around this strange village, looking at the camera, very resolute, very morose looking. And you'd be sitting, well, what is he, what is going on here? The reason that the prisoner uh, grabbed me as a kid uh, was, oh, I don't know, it was just very strange. Why, 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 why? I liked it because as a kid, uh, I was very strange. At the time, I, uh, I suppose I didn't understand some of the, um, some of the more sort of adult themes that were going through it. I would have been nine years old. There's something fascinating and sort of all-encompassing about it, you know. When do you plan to escape? I don't know. I was going to. It's that British eccentric, and I, I, I love eccentric stuff, you know, and just the idea that someone 